Okay, so in this section, we don't go with the acid flow, we go with the initialization flow. We want to find locations where information is initialized and places where it is uninitialized, and therefore we assume that that could become attacker controlled data. So let's go ahead and go to the code and focus on the portions that were given as hints. So the first thing is that I said this structure is not going to be completely initialized. The IO, KIO, CB. The CB stands for callback, so it's an IO callback. Now this particular structure is complicated in some sense because it starts out with a big old union, and therefore the starting data of this structure could look like the starting data of any of these things. Now, we're going to know that it's actually this IORW, this read-write thing, and the reason we can infer that is just from my hints, where I said that part of the path with incomplete initialization is in IO read, and there is an IO KIOCB rec, where rec immediately is pulling from a RW field with the KIOCB. So basically, this is kind of giving us this hint that this IOKIOCB is being used with this RW field to start with, and then we would track this KIOCB throughout the rest of this and look for any incomplete initialization. So it could be the IOKIOCB that's uninitialized, or it could be this, and the way that we sort of infer that it's probably that is that we, you know, keep going down, we've got this rec, we've got the IORW init file, and I've given you the definition of that, that I haven't given you the definition for other things. And once again, that rec pulls out the KIOCB with the RW field. And down here, we see a bunch of initialization. We see the KI flags, the KI complete, and the only other things we sort of see initialized in here are things like the, the rec flags. And here we go, some further setting of flags. So we'll dig into this code again in a second. But basically, with the hinted code, we are now sort of uh, starting to infer that there's a little bit more focus on KIOCB. And furthermore, when we look at the part of the path where uninitialized access occurs eventually, we get into this do IO pull. I have a hint specifically telling you that this calls the IOCB bio IO poll, this function pointer call, and I give you the code for that. And when we get into there, we see that one of the parameters is KIOCB. So again, just kind of uh, limiting this down. Uh, and we see KIOCB private is used right here. That's used to uh, get the definition of a struct bio. And then that bio is passed into bio poll. And then we have this function as well. So basically, if this is the, the code that has something to do with uninitialized data access, the possible things that could be uninitialized are the flags, the IOB, the bio. And if we go and we dig into the definition of IOB, we find that it actually comes from the bio. And so that kind of uh, makes us lean towards bio. Bio comes from KIOCB private. And we saw that, you know, initialization code had something to do with this. And what you'll ultimately find is that you won't find the uh, KIOCB private initialized. So let's go to the code and, you know, look at that a little more, you know, difficultly, <laughs> like just to show you that, you know, there's, it's, you know, kind of hard to keep track of what all is initialized and everything else. So let's pull out some definitions and let's kind of try to, to keep a little bit of an eye on the initialization flow. So we said the control flow path from IO read starts in IO U ring enter. So that's the system call where uh, the kernel is told, hey, I want you to go start chewing on that submission queue now. And so, you know, we would look around inside of this. We would try to, you know, get a sense of what exactly the code is doing, what's getting initialized and so forth. But we come into it in IO U ring enter, and then we have to see, you know, where does it start uh, chewing on these submission queues. So specifically this uh, IO submit submission queues, if we go into that, then we see a sort of structure that is IO submit state start, then there is a do while loop. So a big old do while loop that is allocating requests. So now we've got these IO KCBs, they're being allocated. And so, you know, we can go into there and see whether it's a zero allocation or whether it's, you know, a cached allocation or whatnot. 
And so we keep drilling in. Okay, that just looks like it's pulling from some node and some sort of linked list. If we were to go to the definition, we would see that this is a singly linked list of nodes. All right, so pulling off some linked list. And so it looks like it's pulling it from a free list. So this implies that, you know, whatever this context submit state free list, it's probably some you know, pre-allocated thing where things are already, you know, initialized to some degree and they're just put back onto a free list. So maybe it's fully initialized, maybe it's not, you know, we don't know for sure yet here, but, um, you know, we would have to drill into that a little bit more to ultimately figure it out. And then this right here, this macro container of is an important macro uh, because this, you know, it's complicated. You can see it's very complicated right here. But at the end of the day, what this does is it says, okay, take the first parameter node. So this is some pointer to something that came off of a free list. Take this first parameter, assume that this is going to be the comp list field of the IOKCB struct. So if we went to comp list, we would see that this is embedded inside a IOKCB struct. And so the container of is basically saying, just assume that node is this comp list field of the IOKCB struct and give me back the, you know, the resultant enclosing the container of this node field. So basically give me back a pointer to an IOKCB, assuming that I already have a pointer to the comp list field inside of that. So a whole bunch of pointer arithmetic and structure size arithmetic, but ultimately it's just trying to say, whatever this is, this li singly linked list of nodes that we just looked at, that is going to be enclosed inside of an IOKCB, and this will give us back a pointer to it. So this allocation is not actually like sort of zero allocating or allocating on demand, it's pulling it off of some linked list that's already allocated. Okay, so that gives us back an IOKCB, and that's the rec, and then there's getting the submission queue based on the context, you get a submission queue entry. Uh, and so what I was going at was there's the, the structure of this code is a start, a do while where it's getting submission queues, uh, and ultimately an end. So basically, it's going to loop around and continuously do something in here, and that something is this IO submit submission queue entry. So basically this to submit submission queues to IO submit and so forth and so on. So, you know, essentially I haven't seen any real initialization going on on this yet. Uh, you know, this is not even taking it as a parameter. So initialization unlikely to occur in here. So we've got this rec where we could assume it's initialized, we could assume it's uninitialized. I'm going to assume it's uninitialized for now. And I'm going to track what is done with that as it goes into this submission queue thing. So we look at rec and you know we look down here to see if there's any sort of usage of it as a left side portion of a you know initialization. So here head equals rec. Uh, but no, not really right there. But right here, IO init rec, well, that sounds like initialization, right? So rec, and here we go. Now we have a whole bunch of initialization. What you're actually going to see going on here is it's pulling stuff out of the submission queue entries, like the opcode of like what kind of syscall is this, and it's pulling it out of the submission queue entry and putting it into this rec, this IOKIOCB. So the opcode gets initialized, the flags get initialized, user data, file, blah, blah, blah. So now we could start to have a sense of, you know, what portions of this are actually allocated. So I could just go ahead and make a new thing to keep track for my own purposes of, you know, what of this is actually initialized. So I'll go back to that init. So we've got opcode. All right, I'm going to put things in bold and italic, and heck, why not underline as well, if I think that it has actually been initialized inside of this code. So this will, you know, give me a sense of what's going on in here. All right, we've got flags, user data file. So flags, user data, and file. Right, rec of file. Okay, so that's file. If it was used as sort of a union, 
with just this file at the beginning. We're going to see it's actually used as this IORW, but actually the first field of IORW is a file, so it would essentially be initializing the file uh, pointer inside of the RW. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put that as bold italic, but I'm going to put a note to myself to say this actually initializes rw.file component. All right, what else we got? We got fixed resource refs. We got task. All right, that's initialized. That's initialized. All right, and you know, of course, there could be more initialization throughout all the rest of this. You have to kind of go into every single fu function to see whether it's, you know, doing further initialization. Uh, let's see, rec right here. Anything there? Not that we can see, obviously. So again, this is why, uh, you know, manual reading to find these kind of things is pretty difficult uh, because... You're going to be going through all sorts of control flow, and sometimes, you know, it's ultimately ambiguous. So anyways, let's get out of this IO init rec. Let's say that that's the main initialization that's done on the rec. Let's continue file, you know, following the thing down the path towards read. All right, so init rec, go back one. We've got rec. It was initialized to some degree there. If it, you know, failed, then there's going to be some failure stuff. Else that... All right, so then it looks like trace going into here and some linkage. And finally, the IOQ SQE. And looking at this, it looks like ultimately that is where we're going to be going next on our hinted control flow path. So it takes the rec, hands it into this. All right. And then we go into this path, rec, see where it's used. All right, then there's this IO drain rec. I can see that's where I'm going as well, based on my hints. Again, we would, you know, if you were just trying to audit this, you would have to look all over the place. Rec, go in there. All right, IO get sequence. Let's see what that does. All right, looks like it's just pulling out one field from that and returning a sequence. All right, and you know, function, this is passed into a bunch of other things. All right, next thing up is task queue. Rec is passed in here. It's added to work add. Rec is passed in here. That's added to some, you know, the node is added to the tails of lists. We already kind of saw that that node field uh, can be used in a linked list. All right, and ultimately, Looks like towards the beginning of this, or sorry, towards the end of this, we're going to see it used as added to the list, and then ultimately this task submit. All right, rec into task submit, QSQE into there, rec into there, and now we're going to finally start getting close to our ultimate thing that looks like, you know, parsing different opcodes and stuff like that. All right. Do, 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 you know, IO issue SQE. Here we go. Now we're finally seeing something that looks like a bunch of upcode switch cases for no ops versus reads versus writes versus F syncs and polls and so on. All right. So, you know, there wasn't, you know, I can't say for certain I didn't look at every single function, but it's not going to be, you know, super relevant. The actual sort of so, so the key point is here, we're ultimately getting now into opcode specific functions, and that should lead to opcode specific initialization, right? Because this rec was this KIOCB, and it had, you know, the struct at the beginning where it's basically opcode specific structs. So whether it's read, write, poll, accept, sync, etc., each of those opcode specific structs is probably going to start to be initialized in opcode specific functions. So now we're in here, we've got this rec being interpreted as a RW, an IORW. So now let's uh, pull that out and throw that into our, you know, struct tracking. All right, so we got that. And the first thing of that is going to be an IOKCB, or IOCB rather. 
oops, that's not the code. All right, so the first thing of that is this struct, and that was the actual file pointer that got initialized earlier. So we're actually going to know this is already going to be initialized back when things were being filled in at this level. If you treat it as a union where it's an IORW, then this is going to be the first field of the structure, and that's already initialized. Okay, so what does it do with that once it pulls out that particular IOC, KIOCB, right? So let's see how that's used inside of this function. Well, doesn't look like, you know, so that's used to set some flags, so that's not particularly interesting. I mean, we can certainly set that in our thing. Let's go ahead and say that these flags will be initialized at some point. But the more interesting point here is that rec itself will actually be passed into this IORW init file. So that is going to pass in rec again. It's once again going to pull out the KIOCB. And this is where that's going to be more meaningfully initialized. We've got flags right here. We've got some more setting flags. So flags and complete and rec io poll complete is going to be set so let, let me do that one first so that is going to be set and we've got the ki flags inside the kiocb that's set and we've got complete that is a function pointer that's going to be set and that looks like the main stuff that actually gets set in here. Let's see if we see anything else. Go into that. Okay, I was checking if this file pointer F mode is set. All right, so that is kind of good enough for us for now. You know, we can keep checking, you know, further where is this used, you know, where is this initialized and so forth. But, you know, again, going back to our hint code, so we said, you know, RW init, oops, sorry, that's the bottom. Yeah, that's the right one. So IO read and then the IORW init file are the relevant things that we want to track. And we said this is incomplete initialization. So at this point, based on, you know, a quick skim of stuff, the things we don't see initialized are KI pause, private, KIO prio, and KI wait queue. So now we could basically like go and search for, you know, all initializations of these. We would basically say like, are these actually, you know, initialized somewhere else that we haven't seen yet because, you know, we were doing sort of a, you know, incomplete thing. So I think for incomplete initialization, I'm just going to put underline and uh, italic and the fact that it's not bold it will sort of signal to me that this is not completely initialized. So we could search for all these, but uh, based on sort of the hinting of, you know, which functions, you know, I say to look at for the incomplete initialization usage. This is where, you know, then this essentially sticks out as something we already know is not initialized based on this. And I can see it's used here. So, you know, I could, it's either, you know, going to be this or it's going to be ki pause or ki io prio, etc. So, you know, the, the answer here, obviously, you know, if you took the time to look through all the things exhaustively, this is going to be the field that is actually being read right here, but was never actually initialized. And, you know, if we wanted to, to try to confirm that, we could, you know, go look for all possible initializations of that. So I'm going to go to this function, and let's see, that was in block core, yep. So I can see that it's reading this KIOCB private, but the question is, you know, was that ever actually initialized somewhere else? I can try to find all usages of this. So in my Eclipse, this will show me all usages of this. So here we go. There's like a write. There's some other writes. And so then it starts to look like, okay, well, this actually 
uh, you know, depends upon the different file systems that are used, right? Is it written to null? Is it, you know, setting some bit there? Is it written, you know, looks like null again? Or is it written to some, you know, realistic value? And so this is kind of, again, why doing the actual human reading stuff uh, is very difficult, and that's why these kind of bugs are oftentimes found through tooling rather than uh, direct, uh, you know, audit by a code. So if we ultimately go with this hypothesis of that being uninitialized and therefore turning into attacker-controlled data, uh, then we would basically say bio is now acid, and if bio is acid, then this bio bi bdev could be acid, and so the attacker could control this to be true, and then they could lead to this being called. And so basically, this would be called with bio is acid. You'd go in there, you'd say, all right, again, bio is acid. And then you'd see, like, what are the consequences of that? Well, so bio bdev is acid means that this q becomes acid. And then bio of cookie is also acid. Which makes cookie acid. And then, so this, you know, the attacker can control this. But the really interesting thing that occurs here is later on there's this call to this function pointer. The function pointer is inside of this disk structure. The disk structure is from this queue of disk and the queue we just said based on the assumption of bio being acid, the queue can be acid. And so this is basically our acid flow through this particular code. So basically queue infects disk with acid and then ultimately this is going to be an acid function pointer. And that's a bad thing, right? If the attacker can control a function pointer, that means they now get to hijack control flow and jump wherever they want. So this is the, you know, way, again, you know, they found this by uh, finding that the there was, you know, attacker controlled values or there was uninitialized values ultimately being used in private. And then once they started look at looking at how private was used, they found this very juicy path of function pointer usage. And so then it just became a question of how do they actually, you know, control this private? And then, you know, they had to figure out, well, it turns out that these, you know, K, like KIOCBs and everything else were, you know, pulled from caches. So you couldn't do like type confusion type things or something to try to allocate some other stuff. So what they ultimately did was they basically did a heap spray to cause the uh, full contents of entire pages of memory to become acid. And then later on, when these things were allocated from the cache, the cache would go out and get a page, the page would be filled in with acid, and that would ultimately lead to this private being tainted by attacker controlled data. All right, so that is what they did to find things. That was the vulnerability. And so what was the fix? Well, it was, you'll see very often these uninitialized access bugs, the fixes are extremely trivial. They're, you know, initialization of fields that had gotten missed. So, you know, you can either initialize the entire struct, which is usually the best way to do it, just initialize everything. Uh, but, you know, we had seen that this KIOCB, it had like a file pointer inside of it that was initialized earlier, which so maybe, you know, just initializing the entire struct wouldn't be a good uh, strategy here. And so basically the specific, specific field that was problematic was initialized up front so that no longer could an attacker control this and ultimately lead to function pointer usage. So that was a correct fix.